Welcome to Made for Mondays, the source for digging a little deeper into the Believer's Church Sunday messages and finding ways to apply them to our daily lives. Together, let's take a deeper look and find a way to bring Mondays. Hey, everybody, back to life. welcome to the pod. My name is Heather, and who are you, fellas? <laughs> no, I insist you go first. Oh, thanks. Yeah. Sam Yule is here today. Yule? It's Monday. Is that your middle name? Uh, Sam it's, Yule. Uh, there's a hyphen. Oh, okay, that's good. Yeah. I wish I had a hyphenated name. Yeah. My name is Doug. Less. <laughs> uh, you do have less one. or less. Less. Yeah. Yeah. Douglas. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> yep. There's a hyphen in there now. Uh, so you guys, we were talking before we hit record and you were saying, well, Sam, you were saying, but Doug, this generally is true of you, uh-huh. that you didn't have like a very exciting weekend. Oh, my weekend was very eventful. Oh, oh wait. Sorry. I well, think my, pause then. I was probably I'm, the only one that said. Yeah, I was just I'm, letting him talk. I said my gotcha. my weekends are turning into Pastor Jamie weekends. Okay, because I was going to have a different question. But since you had an exciting weekend, yeah, let's hear it. please tell us all about it. So we went to a Tides game on Saturday. Saturday nice. night. I, I hope this gets more exciting. Oh, yeah, that's it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was good. So, um, But we went, and I didn't look at the weather beforehand. And uh-huh. I'm thinking, we're close to summer. Surely I can Classic. wear it. Classic. Shorts and a short sleeve shirt. Well, obviously, it's the beginning of June. Yeah. It should be hot outside, Yes, right? I agree with you. So we walk outside, and immediately I'm like, oh, no. It's, the, it's not hot outside at all. No. It's overcast, and it looks like it might rain. And we took the ferry, and it was very, very cold. Uh, and even, like, before we even get to the stadium, I'm thinking, oh, this is going to be the worst night ever. I'm going to be constantly trying to survive. And we get there. And it gets it gets colder and colder and colder. You got to pause because there might be more. You are you you have such bad luck in that stadium. Oh, you don't know how to dress for that stadium, no, no matter when oh, it is. That's no, true. it's not the stadium. I just have I don't <laughs> well, watch the weather. I'm getting there too. <laughs> so. The last time we all went as a staff, mm-hmm. you wore I think black jeans. Yeah. Yes. No hat, and it was blazing yeah. hot. It was the opposite of what I've. You had to go buy time. a tides hat, right? Yeah, you I went did. and bought a Tides hat. Yeah, just yes, to keep the sun. But also your face. So on that day, we can, if we want to recall, was also the beginning of June. Yeah, was it? Right? Oh, really? that's true. Yes, very yeah, different weather patterns. Um, also, speaking about how you dress, uh, mm-hmm. me and Chris Stone <laughs> were actually talking about this yesterday. Really, talking about me? Because yeah, because uh, what was I'm it? A, I'm a hundred. <laughs> Something else happened. Oh, you walked in to work last week in shorts and a t-shirt. Uh-huh. And it was like 55 degrees. Oh, yeah. Like, we look, I looked. And the office is always cold. I think you were close to what you're wearing today. Uh, it might be the exact same thing. It, it might Do have. Do you have I a own. Monday outfit? I own three shirts. But okay. you need to know that. <laughs> I just rotate them. <laughs> you need to know yeah. that people are talking about this. I like that. Well. Yeah. It's think, not a positive thing Do you think people you. talked about John the Baptist? Mm. Yes. He's wearing camel hair again? Possibly. Yeah. He wore that last Probably. week. Probably. Yeah. Is so, he eating locusts? Did, did anything um, else happen at the basement? Yeah, yeah. So oh, it, got, okay. it got very cold. And um, me and uh, Jeremy was there and his fam. And we were there. And Natalie and Matt Spangler yeah. were there. And uh, Matt was also wearing shorts and <laughs> a short sleeve shirt. So they went up to get food. And um, Natalie came back first. And she was like, Matt's going to go to the store and buy some clothing. I was like, oh, man, where is it? I'm going to go buy a hoodie. And she said, don't worry. He's going to buy you one, too. I'm like, yo, that's amazing. Like, best friend ever, right? And I'm just, I'm so excited. At that point, I was freezing, but I started feeling warm just because I was hopeful. Yeah. And then um, (laughs) he came back, was like, they were all sold out. I was like, oh, no. Uh, Brutal. Everybody had the same idea. Everybody had the same idea. But then Cody and Stephanie Sanchez were there, too. And they were leaving early. So this story yeah. just keeps going, right? They were leaving early, and Cody said, hey, we're leaving. You can have my, like, pullover kind of windbreaker thing. I said, it's okay. And he was like, no, seriously, you need this. So I put it on, and the rest of the night was amazing. But Matt was still freezing. They left early because he was still oh. freezing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they ended up leaving early because it was so very cold. It didn't feel like an act of sacrifice from him, honestly. No. Because he was already leaving. He was like, going to leave already. He could have given that to you earlier in the night. I would say Cody sacrificed tremendously for me. <laughs> well. Thank you, thank you, Cody, if you're listening. <laughs> but yeah, that was it. Um, so was, did the Tides win? They did. It was like 7-0. Oh, nice. They destroyed them. And fireworks at the end, it was awesome. Yeah. It's Internet's doing real good right now. You can just just Google what's the weather today. It'll tell oh, you. Man. It'll tell you. It's so much more fun just to go out and experience. Yeah, you it. get more stories. That's true. Yeah, I yeah. Because like this would not have happened. It would have no, been that's like true. tides game had a hoodie. End. <laughs> yeah, it been, this is it been warm. Was it just cold or was it raining? It was like it was like misty. Okay. Yeah, it was weird. 
It's been really bad weather. Yeah. You know we don't have a lot going on if we're talking about weather now. I know. On the I know, podcast. This is depressing. This the, is why so I wanted weather. to change my question today. Oh, okay. Okay. To be, if you could have done anything this weekend, oh, what would it have been? Anything. Yeah. What would your oh, what does your favorite weekend look like? Oh man, I would have gone skydiving, <laughs> rocking mountain climbing. Uh, that's still one of the greatest videos you ever did. <laughs> <That's a good laughs> video. If uh, if you're listening, you haven't seen Doug's skydiving video. Yeah. It is incredible. Maybe we we'll, could probably find it. Yeah, we'll find it somewhere. Yeah, it's oh. next to the Jorts rap video. On yeah, the, the yeah. Vimeo somewhere. Um, this wouldn't be like my all time favorite thing, but this weekend specifically. Um, Back near where we grew up in Columbus, Ohio, they had the memorial tournament. Mm-hmm. Golf, this is golf. And we used to love to go to that. So I, instead of being there this weekend, I just watched, watched it on TV. TV. But that's what I would have done on this specific weekend if, okay. I, if I was able to. Yeah, that's good. That's cool. I guess I could have been able to. I could have driven there. <laughs> anything. Like anything in the Well, world. I said this specific weekend. Okay, that's good. Doug, what would you have done? Man, like... The moon would be cool to go there. Yeah, see, I knew you were going to go absolutely ridiculous. <laughs> I mean, it's an open-ended why, question. If you could do why anything. Why are you the way you are? I, <laughs> that would be I knew you were going to do it. If somebody said, hey, do you want to go to the moon That's the answer this weekend, to the question. Yeah, I'd be like, let's go. So you would want to go to the moon? I would love to go to the moon. Oh, my oh, gosh. No that would, terrifies me. Why do you think yeah. that is? I don't even like the swings Because uh, it's space? <laughs> why does it terrify me? Yeah. Why, why wouldn't it terrify everybody? Oh, man, it's like just the unknown. Let's do it. Yeah, the unknown. Oh, my gosh. I, I don't think I'd be afraid if I was in the ship. Yeah, but it's I, like, you're not walking there. <laughs> it, it, well, yeah, that's true. <laughs> yeah. No, but even like the idea of floating, like you'd want to go onto the moon. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, no. Oh, See, getting out. Oh, man. Could you imagine like flying all the way there and be like, no, nah, let's just go home. I'm not, I'm not getting out of this thing. Hey, listen, uh, I don't want to make a great transition, but it's kind of like what you talked about yesterday, uh, yeah. getting out of the boat. Yeah. So, get, But this get out one's the... modernized, <laughs> getting out of the spaceship. Jesus, if it's really you, <laughs> ask me to walk on the moon and see you. But Jesus has gravity on the moon. Oh, that's That's good. the difference. No, he's just like floating, <laughs> jumping. So, yeah, you... Anyways. <laughs> were, you, were you a kid that like wanted to be an astronaut? Uh, I think, yeah. At that point, everybody wanted to be an astronaut. Not me. No, no, no. Really? I don't think so. Not everybody, Maybe it was Doug. just me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, like, there are definitely, for sure, people that yeah. want to be astronauts. I'm not one of them. But, like, seriously, so, like, when, when when they started talking about taking a trip to Mars, not even kidding, inside, I felt this this sense where, like, yeah, if somebody said, hey, we can get you there safely, Was yes, it like I would. you felt like you were being drawn home? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> maybe. Like, uh, maybe there's something You're like, there. Yeah, like, oh, something is calling to me from Mars. Yeah, it's just like the sense of adventure. <laughs> like, yeah, like you're stepping into an environment that no one has ever been to. Like, you will be somebody to walk into this place that no human has ever been. Do you right, you now you're just preaching the gauntlet message That's again. That's so very <laughs> exciting to me. Into the unknown. Into the unknown. <laughs> so, do you feel that way about like adventurous things that are more of a reality that you can participate in? Like uh, you would just do anything adventurous? Yeah, I think so. Like a golf trip. I think a golf trip sounds amazingly <laughs> adventurous. <laughs> a golf tournament. Yeah. Like, I don't like, know. You've I, gone skydiving. Would you like do base jumping or oh something man. like that? I Like bungee jumping or base jumping would be really intimidating. But I feel like if I, if I work myself up enough, I could do it. If yeah. you knew it was safe. Yeah, it would have to be safe. What about but, a free climb? Oh, oh man, I don't know. At that point, at <laughs> no. that point, it's on me, right? Yeah. Like I'm not depending on my own abilities. I'll do something that's like anybody could do this. But so you like, do get scared. Oh yeah, I'm scared of everything. <laughs> okay. Good. So you yeah. would be scared going to the moon. Oh yeah, I'd be terrified. Okay. But it'd be, I think the but the excitement and the adventure would gotcha. overpower the fear. I'm just. I was just trying to get oh, a yeah, scale no. of your adventurous. I would be terrified. Skydiving, I was scared out of my mind, oh, but it was so much yeah. fun. I would do it again. See, I love skydiving. I wish I could be like a. I wish I could go every weekend. Mm-hmm. That would be so fun. Yeah. It's so expensive. It Great really coach. is. Yeah, yeah, yeah that'd that would be, awesome. be so awesome. Yeah. Uh, we went when we went skydiving. Like we got down. Nate was like, "Yep, I'm good. That's enough for me." Mm-hmm. And I was like, "Can we go again?" And also, can we go base jumping? Oh, I yeah. would love to oh. try that. Oh, see, so oh, base jumping. But I, but like being complete. Uh, there's something about I won't do something like I even going on a cruise would terrify me. Really? Yes, not going on a cruise ever. Hmm. I feel like you're out in the middle of nowhere. What oh, if yeah. something happens and goes? Horribly wrong. Like, but you don't think about that when you're skydiving. 
Not really. I what feel if something like, went horribly wrong? Well, yeah. yeah, but I think that is a thing where I feel like if that goes wrong, like it's just, we're oh. just done. If a cruise goes wrong, you could have like the right. flu for it's like just a couple terrible. weeks. Yeah. Yeah, it's like true. a terrible Did experience. you guys see, I think this is a true story, the um, oh boy. the kayaker, he lived, but he got swallowed up by the whale. I don't think that's true. In California. No. There's a video of it. The whale yeah. comes up and like gets him. But he lives. It, that's not true. And people are like, how do we not believe the story of Jonah? <laughs> because that's not what happened what to Jonah. What website is this? It's like BibleNews.com. <laughs> he saw it on TikTok or... for no, sure. I'll find yeah. it. I'm no, going to you... find it. Okay. <laughs> Don't worry about it. <laughs> Don't worry about it. I think <laughs> that um, I actually, I'm like 90% sure that's not a yeah. true video. AI, create a video where oh, a man could gets right. by a whale. Well, that's the thing. You don't know what to believe, but I'm just choosing to believe everything. Oh, that's good. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah why not? Hot take. Might why not? Yeah, go for it. Just everything. Yeah. All right. Then that makes AI or humans, it is what it is. <laughs> well, talking about believing everything, have you anything stand out in this week's Bible reading to y'all that oh, you're yeah. believing? <laughs> did you have someone, Doug? Oh, uh, not in particular. Oh, I did. Um, <clears throat> it's funny that we're reading, like, since we're in the Gospels right now, I, I feel like every single worship song has come from oh, these. Yeah. Like, so when I'm reading them, and you're reading these stories that you've read for many, many times, it's bringing back songs to me. Um, this one was a little bit under like the reckless love kind of thing, uh, but it's the good shepherd and his sheep. Mm-hmm. But I love the line because it just makes it makes Jesus look so awesome. He says, the father loves me because I sacrificed my life so I may take it back again. No one can take my life from me. I sacrifice it voluntarily. That's a great line. You can't That's take good, my yeah. life. I, I, I give it voluntarily. For I have the authority to lay it down when I want to, and I also can take it up again. For this is what my father has commanded. I was yeah. like, oh, That's man, good. it just gives me goosebumps. feels like a, a movie trailer of like a super <laughs> awesome Like a superhero. superhero. Yeah. yeah. It's just, it was so good. I, I, I picked that up this week. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah. That's really cool. Doug, did you have anything that came to mind? Oh, no, no, not okay. not necessarily. Um, I, I've been trying to do both the reading, but also what Jamie was challenging us to do through the What If Jesus Was Serious mm-hmm. series, just reading through the Sermon on the Mount. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, and I, I missed a few times, but, man, it's been really cool. So I, I kind of want to keep that going Yeah. just to, okay. to make it something irregular. I would love to get to the point where I'm just living my life and, like, something happens and my brain goes right to a teaching as opposed to, like, I don't know. Like selfishness yeah. or just like wisdom that I think is important. So, are you reading all three chapters of the Sermon on the Mount daily? So, I'm is that to, what you're trying to do? I'm trying to read chunks of it. Okay. So, like breaking it up into the sections. So mm-hmm. he talks about, um, you know, don't worry in the section. So I'm trying to read that like one day and really read it and think about it and read it again if I need to. Um, depending on my morning, if I wake up and I'm a little bit more tired, and I get to the end. I'm like, oh man, what did I read? I'm yeah. gonna read it again just to make sure it like it's in my mind. So. I've been trying to read it in chunks just uh, each day. I was going to say we have another Jen on our hands. Oh, with old, all the readings? two devotional guy yeah. over here. Oh, no. Like, <laughs> <laughs> that, to Jen, me, last, Jen last week was like, oh, well, I'm on three devotionals right oh, now. No. To, <laughs> yeah. It's By like, no okay, means Jen. is this like some kind of weird flex. <laughs> no. <laughs> it's just like, like, to me, I love the, the repetition of reading. Uh-huh. Like, because I, I easily forget. Um, yeah. Especially when I get busy in my day, I'll completely forget what I read that morning. So I want it to be to a point where it's just like it's habit. Right. It's the first thing I think of. So yeah. I'm hoping in like 10 years <laughs> that'll, right. that'll happen. Yeah, it's like the scripture gets to your heart, yeah, not like, just your brain. Oh, man, it becomes who you yeah. are, and it's awesome. Yeah. It's who you are. Hey, hey songs, right? <laughs> <laughs> I love um, Sky Jatani, who wrote the last mm-hmm. book that we did the series on. Um, he does a devotional that's called With God Daily. Oh, yeah. And he says that it's for the people that don't like devotionals. So if that's you, you might want to check this out. But what's really cool about his devotional is he kind of focuses on one section of scripture for the whole week. Mm-hmm. Or sometimes it's even longer than that. So he, recently he's been going through just Psalm 23 and so it's just six verses in that chapter, but he kind of pulls out different things all week long as he's giving you a daily devotional. And then he also has a weekly prayer uh, from like a historical Christian theologian that he shares for the entire week. So that whole idea of repetition, like you're reading and yeah. receiving and saying the same things throughout the week. So by the end of the week, it does feel like, oh, I like I know 
what this is about. I know this is like hmm. sitting in my spirit a little bit longer than just yeah. getting through a 10 minute devotional. So, and how cool that's is good. that? I feel like that's that's probably the way it was meant to be read. Like the early church, mm-hmm. they didn't have much, they had like letters and maybe bits and pieces of the Old Testament scrolls. So, they would have read it over and over and over mm-hmm. again, or recited these things and just like almost internalized them in that sense. So, there, there's something to that. Yeah, super good. So we started a new series this week, also based on another book, um, and it is of the title Unquestioned Answers. Mm -hmm. Doug, do you want to say that like 10 times? You did great, though. Did I? I think you did. I I don't know if I I was in the second. I was in the whole second, and I didn't hear you mess up. That's good. The, you messed up one time in uh, second. Never mind. Oh, You're a yeah. loser. I'm no, a, I failed. <laughs> but it was so fun because you said you were like, "I say I've been struggling with this. Uh-huh. I have it in my notes this way." Blah blah blah. And then the first time that you referenced it off of notes, oh, yeah. you said it wrong, and I was, I just was Which like, "Oh was yeah." That? Second. Oh, see, I wasn't listening to yeah. you then. Sorry. <laughs> I, had already, I, had I think it was actually out. probably you were still backstage because it was like at the very uh, beginning of his oh, message. Did you hear my call out to you? I didn't. Oh, no, you didn't oh, hear he it? he talked so, no. so highly Was this you. in the beginning? Second service, yeah, yeah. because you said I... I apologized to Doug for oh, service. Yeah. And I came out and said, man, no need for apology. I said, like, that's why I appreciate you guys so much because of the honesty. You come out on stage and, like, you just want to talk about, you know, where you're at in this. So yeah. I, I really appreciated that. I have a um, – I'm very sensitive to worship leaders <laughs> stealing uh, – like, stealing the message, stealing the sermon. Uh-huh. Like, you guys on the teaching team have prepared for, like, weeks and weeks and weeks – We've prepared on our music for weeks and weeks and weeks. So after the music, sometimes I feel like, I mean, it is good. Like if mm-hmm. I feel like I need to share, I'm going to share. But I just think like you, like you guys have prepared. You've you've gotten to tune with God for like planning. And we're super big on planning around here. So I always feel just a little sensitive to that. But yeah, yeah. I appreciated I, your response to it as well. As yeah, well. dude. I wouldn't see it as like, you're not stealing anything. You're adding to it. Sure. Like. It'd be one thing if you said, "Hey, at the very end, yeah. Doug is going to say <laughs> this." <laughs> here's my go ahead and fill in that blank here's right three now. Three points. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Faithful but. is the fill in this week. <laughs> <laughs> it adds to it, man. I think it's it's really cool to see different perspectives on it. So yeah, it was, it was good. It was a good. It was a good Sunday. Yeah, it really was. So with this series kicking off this week, before we dive into this Sunday's um, topic, are is there anything that you're hoping um, or praying that people that are a part of the series? will really be able to walk away with or that you're even hoping maybe in your own lives as we do plan and prepare for this. Um, you know, we put a lot of study and thought and stuff into these things. So is there something that we're about three weeks out in our like um, the serious kind of parts of our planning? And so is there something already that you're discovering like, man, God's really working on me in this and I'm excited to see how this plays out through this next several weeks? Yeah, I, I hope that we're able to address some of these cliches because I've said some of these, like reading through the list that we're doing is like, yeah. man, I've used that because in a moment, you kind of just like want to help the person, you want to encourage them, you want to help them feel like, okay, it's all right, like you got this, God's got you. So you say these things because maybe we don't know what else to say mm-hmm. or we don't have time to have that conversation. Maybe we don't know the person all that well. So um, we don't have like the relational collateral to go deeper than that. Yeah. So I'm hoping this series allows us to do some of that better. Mm-hmm. So instead of helping this person by saying like, well, just have faith or um, some of the other ones like God is good right. or, um, you know, hate was I hate the sin, love the sinner. Yeah. Like instead of using these cliches, actually have a conversation about it and yeah. wrestle with it together yeah. and, and allow that to strengthen your faith. And also if somebody isn't a believer and their idea of Christianity is cliche, like, these Christians are just like, they're following these little cliche statements and like Mm. faith is just kind of like this motivational talk kind of thing. No, like I I want them to see that there's, there's depth and Mm -hmm. there's um, like a strong foundation of what we believe. That's good. Uh, Don't you guys think that when we never do series like directly pointed at staff, but I feel like this series could be very staff uh, driven because of the fact that I think we're the most guilty of saying these lines sometimes because you know, we'll be out and we might not know everybody. So you say like, oh man, you just got to have some faith in this, you mm-hmm. know? Um, this also reminds me of the, uh, I'll pray for you. Yeah. I don't think, I don't think that's one of the weeks, Mm-mm. but I feel like that's a cliche that cliche, cliche, cliche. Oh. I, I think in France, they say cliche. <laughs> 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 potato, potato. Um, <laughs> I don't know what I was going to say now. 
Oh, the prayer thing. Um, I'm so guilty of that. That's this. I was getting serious. Dang it. Um, uh, I think what God's showing me is I, I've been trying to do this over the last year is like, if I tell somebody I'm praying for them to do like write their name down, remember it, uh, have it in my notes and actually like pray for them when you think about it. Don't mm-hmm. make it, don't make it have to be like, oh, I, I didn't pray for my first 15. So I guess I won't pray for them today. It's like, man, you can be praying as you're moving about your day and those kind of things. Yeah. So yeah. Um, that's, I'm sure there'll be other parts of this series that kind of stick out. But right now that's kind of where I'm leaning into. Yeah. I think that's so good because even even your setup yesterday, Doug, was explaining that there is truth in a lot of the cliches mm-hmm. that we're talking about, For right? Sure. So like we've done in the past, we've done the um, God at the Movie series and things like that, which is also kind of the same way that I view this series. Um, like we don't, we're not necessarily promoting the movies that we were doing during those series, but there's something in there that we can pull biblical truth yeah. from. And so I see that in these cliches, like the cliche itself is not where we want to just settle and rest in using mm-hmm. it, but to say like, but what's the truth mm-hmm. part of this? Or where does this need to go deeper? And how can this build relationship, kind of the starting point, not the answer, yeah, right? Yeah, it brings context to yeah. this, like, this thing that could be biblical truth. Right. Yeah, that's yeah. good. And really. if you're looking for a starting point, check out our starting point <laughs> class that happens in our B group seasons. Okay, thank you, Sam. Yeah, that's good. I don't plug. think we're in a season of starting point, <laughs> no, I, but it's you gotta a wait for class. the Wait for the season. Wait yeah. for it to start. Yeah, and then you'll be on point. Okay. <laughs> All right. So with the cliches, the intent is often good. um, But why is the cliche just have faith sometimes um, a little insensitive and not necessarily the best response for someone going through a difficult situation? Because that's the cliche we're tackling this week is just have faith. Yeah. I I, I don't think it deals with all of the uh, intricacies of our faith. If you tell somebody just have faith, you're assuming they don't have faith. Like, you're going through a tough situation. Just have faith. Wait, did I completely lose my faith? Or is there like – and I think there are like levels and degrees of it where I have questions and I have concerns. Is it not okay to have those things? Mm -hmm. Um, I'm wondering and I'm worried. Is it not okay to feel that way? Mm. So I think the other way of looking at it, and Jeff Myers writes this in his book, To Live Out Your Faith, I think it's so much more helpful because it allows us to be honest. Mm-hmm. So this is where I'm at right now. I'm going to live this out. And that means asking questions. It means finding yourself in a community of people that care about you and is able to speak into that. Um, I think living it out is what actually happens. Just have faith. It's like the, uh, I just want to make you feel better about yourself in a moment. Live it out is the way that we express what God is doing through us. Yeah, it's almost like uh, <laughs> saying just have faith is just trying to get you to just think differently about this thing. Yeah. Not like putting any action to it, right? Um, and you just brought up the Jeff Myers mm-hmm. statement that says the Bible didn't doesn't tell us to just have faith; it tells us to live out our faith. And that statement seemed to really be what you use to shape the big idea for the day. Um, and you, it, which is, I can live out my faith because Jesus is faithful. Yeah. So can y'all share a time in your lives where you felt like the cat from the Just Hang On poster that you used, Doug? And how did you experience Jesus's faithfulness in that season? So just to set up, if you haven't watched the message yet, um, Doug kind of used that whole illustration of the cat poster where he's hanging on this little rope and it says, just have faith at the bottom, or just hang in there is what it says. Yeah, just hang in there. Um, And that's kind of the non-Christian version of yeah. this cliche, right? Um, so yeah, just think about it, guys, like where you where you felt like that cat, like you're just hanging on, um, but how instead of you hanging on there, you felt Jesus show up because of your faith and get you through that season. Yeah, so uh, I mean, the one that comes to mind, I, I think for me is the most obvious, is like when I was kind of preparing to go on sabbatical, um, I kind of felt like that, like just barely hanging on. Um, and, and there were people in that time that were like, man, you, you got this. It's a busy season, right? And that's another cliche. It's a busy season. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, clearly it is. But like it doesn't really help me in the busyness. Um, and I think in that time what I needed was I needed to know that it's okay to rest. 
It's okay to um, to take a Sabbath. It's okay to take a sabbatical, which is like a really long Sabbath uh-huh. in a sense. It's okay to rest. And in that rest, um, you know, you completely rely on God. And that's what I wasn't doing. I wasn't resting well at all. I was um, constantly go, go, go. In my mind, it was all based on performance. What can I accomplish? What can I do? And in a time of rest, is not about what I can accomplish at all. It's about, God, what are you trying to accomplish in me? Um, so that allowed me to kind of shift this mindset to go from like, yeah, what can I what can I do to God? What are you trying to do? And I needed rest to do that. So I was barely hanging on because it was all about me, right? Um, and as soon as I, I learned what rest needs to look like in my life, I really feel like, um, yeah, God was meeting me in that place. Yeah, which is it's hard to do when you're in a busy season. <laughs> yeah, but it's so sure. important. Like even even in the busyness, those are those are critical practices that we have to do. Mm-hmm. Yeah, definitely. Um. When I was reading this question yesterday, I was like, man, there are, if we were probably all like sitting down at a table, like Mm -hmm. I would go into detail about a lot of these things because I was like, well, probably not over the pot. Am I going to share that story? (laughs) Okay, I don't want to share that story. Um, So I guess I'll go more general. Like, I just think I that maybe this isn't healthy. I just feel like there's always a season of life where we're hanging in there in something. Mm -hmm. I'm using the season of life. Um, But it's when it's went all the way from like, um, to friends when I was in high school to like trying to get through school um, to like, okay, now we're first newly married and we're going through a lot of stuff with, with family and, and just difficult life experiences with people passing away. Like then I would felt like I was just hanging in there. And then there's just seasons where you're like, just feel like you're hanging in there spiritually. Like, okay, God, I haven't heard from you in a while. Just kind of feels like a dry place. What's going on. Um, and then you add like parenting to that and you're like, oh my gosh, like I'm just hanging. I got a 14 year old daughter. I'm I'm definitely just hanging yeah. <laughs> in there right now because I have no idea what I'm doing. So um, yeah, I mean, there's a lot of specifics, but to answer that general, like, generally, I just think there's always a, something in the season of life you are in that I feel like I'm hanging in. It could be, it's still a great season, mm-hmm. but there's something else that you're just kind of hanging on to. You're like, man, I need God to show up big time in this or yeah, that's good. get me off this rope. Yeah. Yeah. That's really good. So, Did you have one? Um, oh gosh, I didn't really think about. Sorry, it. Sorry, I know you were hosting. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> um, yeah, I think there's. I I would say similar with Doug. Like my season leading up to my sabbatical, I was. Yeah, you guys were. Mess. I was falling off <laughs> like the rope. I was no longer yeah. hanging on the rope. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Maybe like one tiny little finger still was there, and. The experience of Jesus in that for me was through people. Mm-hmm. Like, I just had, um, it makes me emotional. Like, I just had people show up for me where I couldn't hang on. Yeah. And they either, like, helped me see, like, in some of the things, I think what you just described, Sam, about, like, there are parts of it that you feel like you're hanging, you can hang on still, and then there are parts of it that you're falling off, right? Mm-hmm. So I think they even helped me figure out, like, is this the rope I'm supposed to be hanging on to? And that might be the thing that is the hardest in those seasons. Like, yeah. you're hanging on so tight to something, and maybe it's not what you're supposed to be holding on to. Mm. So to have faith to even, like, let go if you need to. And, yeah, I just feel like Jesus put people in my life in that season that helped me discern that because I was in too much of a mess to even yeah. be able to have that filter without them like asking me hard questions and challenging me and things. And like you were saying, Doug, like, yeah, some people were saying like just not helpful things, yeah, yeah. but there were definitely people in my life who were also like very sincere and like calling out even my identity and questioning, like, could I do this or should I be doing this? And like affirming, yes, you, this is difficult, but you should be doing this or you. So I think for me in those seasons, like that's a specific one, but that's where I've seen um, Jesus's faithfulness to me in those hanging on Mm -hmm. seasons Mm -hmm. is through people. That's cool. Yeah, Doug, we should have done a great, you have been a great um, message example. Um, so I knew you were preaching this and the hang, the hang on must have been kind of going through my brain. And then I saw a video and uh, it's like, if you, if you ever just try to 
hold yourself up, just free hanging, uh-huh. just on a bar, just mm-hmm. hold yourself up. And so I did that on Friday. Me and Joey were at the gym and I was, it is really difficult. Like, I mean, I'm talking like 30 seconds in, you're oh, like, yeah. this is, this is crazy hard. And it's not just like the weight of your body. It's like your hands start hurting, uh, your feet start falling asleep. And it's all these things that it related back to kind of when you were preaching yesterday, I was like watching that cat and I, I love cats, <laughs> big, big cat guy. <laughs> But I'm sitting there and I was like, I know what that feels like, like to actually physically hang. And we're doing that in our spiritual and our relationships Mm -hmm. like all the time. And I just think that correlation, as much as I don't actually like cats, I just, that was such a great example that you used. Yeah, that was was really good. Really good. So how long were you able to just uh, hold on? Oh, not long. Um, We didn't, I didn't actually time it out. I was like kind of counting in my head, Uh but I probably got to 30 seconds. Probably could have made a little longer, but I was like, this hurts. I don't want to do this anymore. So if I made it like 45 seconds? Well, oh, is here's that the, the thing. New challenge? If we were gonna if okay. we were gonna make a competition, I'm gonna let my arms fall off before I let you win. So <laughs> we did a competition once. We had to see who could hold her breath the longest. Remember that? <laughs> yes. And I think you and Jamie were like the final did, two yeah. in it. And I was like, they are going to pass out. I was willing to pass out yeah, at that I was point. Like, he is going to risk his yeah. We do way too many of these dumb yeah, was challenges. Great. So let's get back to this. <clears throat> um, I oh loved God. in the message yesterday, Doug, the contrast that you pointed out in the two stories you shared from Matthew's gospel. In one, we see how the disciples felt so cared for in their time of need. And in the other, they felt like this worried, um, scared, overwhelming feeling. And that ping pong of emotions, Mm -hmm. I think, is so real for us. Like as you were describing, um, you do such a good job of of making the disciples not feel like these like characters we're hearing about, but like us. Yeah, yeah. When when you're preaching, I love it. Thank you. Um, so how? You still have some things you can work on. Okay, let's not go. <laughs> <laughs> what can we do with the fears and doubts we encounter when it comes to faith? Like, can we hold faith and doubt at the same time? Yeah, that's really good. And like hearing you say that, I kind of wish I had more time on Sunday. I would have loved to yeah. like <laughs> okay. really talk about both those stories. Just do right? like five more minutes. No, seriously. Yeah, <laughs> Sam wouldn't have used well, you that can, time. You can have it right now. Were what you, you want to talk about, Doug? Wait, were you generally not making fun of me right there? When? Just now? Wait, what? About the time? You were. No, I, that was a joke. Yeah. Oh, okay, good. Because like, I was like, was he genuinely not making fun of me? <laughs> no, I was I, like, gosh, your heart's so good. No. Um, so, <laughs> so it is like... and. I didn't. I didn't think about that until you just mentioned it. Like, yeah, the miracle right before when he feeds the people, the disciples are still like, "How are we going to feed all these people?" Right. And Jesus is like, "Of course you can. I'm going to do it. Just hand it out." Right. Um. And it's such a cool example of like a need that's so minimal. Right. I'm hungry. I'm sure they could have went home without a meal and they would have been okay. But it was like, "I'm going to feed you, and I care about you." And then right after that, it's like, "No, your actual life is on the line. This storm might kill you." And then they start doubting. So is it like, well, he provided for a need that might be like this daily kind of thing. Is he going to provide for something that's way more serious? Right. Like, is he going to show up here? He showed up for something that I kind of needed. Will he show up for something that I desperately need as well? Mm. Yeah. So it could have been that. Like, maybe they were kind of wrestling with with the level of care. Um, that, that's a really good, uh, a good meditation <laughs> that we should do on that. That's really cool. Yeah. So do you think that... Um with that, do you think that they were able to come to an understanding of, yes, I can have faith in the little, in the big. Yes, I can have faith and question. Mm-hmm. Like, even what you were saying at the beginning like of our chat today and at the beginning of your message yesterday, um, can I, the just have faith thing kind of dismisses whatever level of faith I'm I'm holding at the time of going through the struggle. So can we hold both faith and doubt? Yeah, I think we can. So when Jesus looks at Peter, after he pulls him up out of the water, he says, why did you doubt? You have little faith. And that statement, right? You have little faith. It's like this acknowledgement of where Peter was. Like Jesus knows his heart. He knows what he's wrestling with. And he's like, man, you doubted me. You doubted who I was. Um, and you have little faith. But he uses that phrase other times too, like when he's when he's teaching in the Sermon on the Mount and he gets to the part where he's saying, don't worry. He tells them, you know, don't worry about what you're going to wear. And he says, look at the flowers. They're clothed. Um, and I think it says like even Solomon and all mm-hmm. of us splendor didn't have clothing as nice as they have. Yet they're here for a day and then they're gone tomorrow. They're burned up in the fire. And God cares about you even more than those flowers. So, of course, he's going to provide for you. And then he says, you have little faith. 
and it, I don't read that as a criticism of the people he's teaching. Even in that, it says realization. You have little faith. You're doubting whether or not God is going to provide for you, but he's still going to provide. And he never says um, God will provide for you if you have greater faith. Mm-hmm. He says God's going to take care of you. You have little faith. So you have this small amount of faith, and God is still going to be there for you. He's still going to be right there to pull you up out of the water. Um, and you're going to learn, and you're going to grow in that relationship, and you're going to grow in your reliance on him. So it's almost like this learning process, and Jesus is is challenging them to step into it. God will be there, yeah. and you're going to see it, and you're going to grow in this understanding of who he is. So even when you have little faith, God's not going to abandon you. He's not going to say, oh, yeah. your faith isn't at that level where it needs to be. I'm out. Like, he's going to be right there in the storm with you. He's going to be right there That's taking really care good. of your needs. You have a little faith. And I, I think we find ourselves there. Yeah. We find ourselves in seasons where we have little faith. We have find ourselves in seasons where we're totally reliant. Mm-hmm. And it, even in those moments where we consider ourselves, like, at a low point, Jesus is still right there with us, yeah. teaching us and helping us grow. And I, I think he wants us to be honest. It, I, this is like the longest answer ever. But no, man, it's fine. It's good. Yeah. I so appreciate Peter's honesty. Yeah. I think he was very vocal about things that we personally, I am not vocal about. Mm. I don't know if I could look Jesus in the faith, face and say, hey, I know it's you, but if it's really you. <laughs> right. I, I, man, I would be so intimidated. I yeah. wouldn't step out of the boat. No way. Well, I would go to Mars. So no, maybe I would. I, I feel don't. like you would for sure step out of the boat It'd if you fun. want to go to the moon. Yeah, yeah. It'd yeah. be really fun. But I would be so <laughs> incredibly scared. So Peter was very open and honest about what we all feel. It's just we don't say it all the time. Mm-hmm. And I think I think there's something that I really admire in that, like a faith that is honest and open yeah. and lived out. Not this like face where like, I am – my faith is totally secure and strong, mm. but it's nope. I have answers and I have doubts and I have insecurities. Yep. No, that's so good. And I I love how you pointed out um, that Jesus saying you have little faith to Peter and that was not a rebuke. Yeah. I have never, ever considered that it wasn't. Yeah, for like sure. every time that I've read that story, every time that it was shared with me growing up, like it was to me like in a disciplinary tone. Oh, yeah, yeah. And so to even consider that it wasn't, that it was, it's more of just like Jesus acknowledging like his character in that moment. Like this is just what you're, what you're struggling with is having little faith, Mm -hmm. just saying that. And then you said that he was, um, it was illustrating his willingness to rescue a failing follower. Yeah. And that's one of those things that I think we don't consider, Like we so often we feel like we have to be doing all of the right things. And even if we're not doing them, we have to believe big enough. We have to have faith big enough. We have to whatever it is for Jesus to be willing to rescue us. Mm -hmm. And it's actually when we're in these weakest moments that that's when he shows up so strong. And yeah, I just I love that thought. Or if he doesn't show up in a way that we we would mm-hmm. like mm-hmm. um it almost makes us feel like even less like oh i didn't have i didn't have i didn't right. have faith the size of a mustard seed yep. like i must be i'm i'm just like so little and that's mm-hmm. why god's not doing it where dog yeah that's such a great uh, i mean the disciples had jesus right in front of them like yeah. he was right there and they still they were still he said you have little faith yeah. so not to like take a you know you know give us a a a free pass, yeah. but it's like, have a little, you know, right. grace on yourself too of right. like, yeah, we're, we're working through this, but like they had him right in front of them, like physically could see him doing these things and they were still trying to work through that, their yeah. faith. And how encouraging is that, right? Like yeah. this story isn't about us getting beat up in our failure, mm-hmm. but it's about Jesus being faithful, even when we yeah. consider ourselves failures. Um, even that song, like, uh, I may be weak, but, but your, your spirit is strong, strong in me. Yeah. My flesh may fail. Um, but my God, my God, you never will. I know the lyrics they're in there somewhere. Uh Um, but it's, we sing that, but I, I don't think we, we really try to understand what it means for us. Right. Yeah. Like, no, literally like when I'm at my lowest point, Jesus, you are still right there with me. You're not ashamed of me. You're not like running from me. You're running to me. Um, in the book of pray like monks, live like fools. Mm -hmm. He talks about that. He said at one point, Jesus runs to us in our sin. And for some reason, I, when I read that, it hit me at such a deep level, like in my sinfulness, Jesus is running to me mm-hmm. because he he desires so much more for me. And he's going to pull me up out of the water and he's going to say like, man, I'm going to teach you who I am. 
And it's going to be a, you're going to struggle with it. You're going to wrestle with it, but I'm going to teach you who I am Mm -hmm. so that you can rely on me and you can learn what that looks like. But it's not like a rebuke. It's like a teacher Mm -hmm. teaching his student. Yeah. I'm I'm right here with you, bud. We got this. Right. Um, I think sometimes we read that almost like, like a coach after a ball game, Mm -hmm. you lose the game. It's like, we're going to go, we're going to train. We're going to get better. So the next time that storm comes up, Peter, you are walking on water. Right. Right. And it's not that Jesus is like, no, I'm here with you. Like, let me do this for you. You're trying. It's all about performance in with, with you, Peter. Yeah, man, let go of the performance and just rely. You talked about how um, out of that moment the disciples worshipped. Mm-hmm. Right? They they saw Jesus rescue Peter. They saw him calm the storm, and then they worshipped him. And so, in the closing of the message, you were really um, just talking to us about ways that we could do that and how understanding. Jesus' faithfulness causes us to want to worship. And Mm. I really appreciated how vulnerable you were in even describing, like, what Peter had to feel getting back in the boat. And, like, that embarrassment that he may have felt. And not only to be confronted with maybe his lack of faith in Jesus being there for him as he took these steps on the water, but now, like— and we have like this kind of cocky view of Peter, right? Like he's kind of like the guy that's a little bit arrogant. He's the bold guy. He's like kind of probably telling the guys what to do all the time, that sort of thing. And now he's getting in this boat, failing in front of all of them. And you were talking about just your own, how you relate to that. Mm-hmm. Like when something, when a ball gets dropped and something fails, um, do we really, how do you handle that among your peers and yeah. whoever else is looking on? So I would just love to to talk for, as we wrap up um, this time, just about some practical ways that we can live out our faith, that we can handle embarrassment and failure and still be in positions to praise and worship Jesus for who he is and how he shows up in those moments. Do you guys have any... I was going to say, um, man, could, if you really could put yourself in Peter's shoes, if you will, like he's getting out of this boat, like soaking wet. Mm-hmm. Like he's just like oh, drenched. Yeah. Yeah. Like you just failed. You're like you, you were, uh, you were a superstar at first. Cause you took a few steps and you're like, Oh my gosh, I'm doing this. Right. And, um, man, I think about this, like, I, I don't, can you met like the hug, like uh-huh. all these guys, you get back in the boat and you're going from like, we thought we were going to die. And Jesus saved us. Like, of course they worshiped him. Like, of course, in that moment they did it. They probably weren't doing it when he fed everybody, right? Like you were saying, yeah. the miracles were a little bit different. But I just think of like that, even though we can't, again, we can't physically do that. Like, that's what I feel like when I'm, when we're singing, like when we're, we're when mm. we're singing these songs in the act of worship, it, it feels like kind of like that night, like they're in the boat and they're just like, it's almost like this just huge reunion because they all thought they were going to die. Mm-hmm. And now everything's calm and hugs are going around. They're laughing. They're crying. They're like, oh, my gosh, mm-hmm. this was crazy. Peter, remember when you just fell in that water and, like, <laughs> Jesus came back? And he's like, just, I don't know. I, I think, like, I love thinking like that mm-hmm. and, like, putting those kind of mm-hmm. pictures in your head because it makes it so much more real for me. And it makes my faith a little bit bigger, Yeah, um, I think. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, I love the story because it really— it kind of highlights every aspect of the Christian life. Yeah. So you have the moments where you're sinking and Jesus is right there to save you. Mm. And this is like really amazing, like personal connection with Jesus, right? He is there for you. Mm -hmm. He cares about you and he wants to save you. The storm is still raging though. And that's tough. Like even in the storm, Jesus is saving you. That's amazing. And then there's a moment where he's walking you back to the boat and you have community but maybe your distance a little bit. So he's walking you back to community. He's helping you trust. And maybe that's where Peter's feeling that insecurity. Like I, I would, I don't know how they walk back to the boat. I picture like Jesus kind of got his arm around us and he's like kind of carrying him back. And Peter's still like sinking a little bit. It's Peter like, <laughs> yeah. it's Peter like flopping in the water, but Jesus I, is like, con- like, you know, steady walking. Maybe um, I don't. just I like a like, piggyback situation. He's yeah, like, I, all right, I'm not touching that water yeah. again. I feel like it's like the toddler when they had the jumpers on, you know, the jump, the puddle jumpers, and you just could grab the back of the string and just oh, yeah. pull them up out of the water. <laughs> he's got him by like his, yeah, he's just his holding rope. just like <laughs> water. So like he's kind of like going back down yeah. in the water. He just like Oops, shucks sorry. him back in the boat. Yeah, Jesus, <laughs> pull me up just a little bit more. Okay, yeah. bud. Um, but he walks him back to community, right? Yeah, mm-hmm. and that's 
I mean, I would assume, I mean, we don't know what Peter was thinking in that moment, but if if I was Peter, that's when I would be the most worried. Like you see your friends in the boat, Jesus is walking you back and you're like, they know. Yeah. They know everything that just happened. They saw it all. What are, are they going to accept me again? Yeah. And But he gets back into the boat and they worship. And then the yeah. storm is calm. And then you have this sense of like, I'm in community who cares about me, loves me. We can worship together. Yeah. And they help me to work through this. The storm is behind us now. Yeah. But there's going to be another storm and we're able to worship in the calm. But I know that these people are going to be here for me. Like right. when the next thing happens too. Um, yeah, there's like every aspect of that, the good yeah. and the bad, the difficult and the easy, the joy and the sorrow. It's such a good story. Yeah. Yes. And they, I love too that it's like, it wasn't about Peter and it wasn't about the storm then. Yeah. It was just about Jesus. Just about Jesus. Yeah. And so the disciples good. never say, Peter, just yeah. have faith, bud. No. You almost had it. Yep. Yeah. It's just like, they let's just worship. They turn their focus to Jesus. Yeah. Well, that's all we've got time for today. And until next time, we hope that you will share this on your social media feeds and even send it to a friend if you think that this might be encouraging to them. Thanks for being here, everybody. Go and be loved.